Hey there team, and welcome to a Grey Havens fight here. We have a 5 versus, I would suspect, a 5 versus 3 on the Grey Havens, sent in by Beast Mode, or Beastie 70. So we've got Mordor with him, more on archers here, uh, and orc archers, orc fodder, nice, Sauron's well, oh, ah, okay, no, I don't usually pause, but I'm going to take this opportunity when, uh, when he's just spread his army out like that. We've got this, uh, the Temple Guard, that's where we've got the General. As much as I adore Archer Generals, I don't know, like, whenever I play Mordor, I tend to put him in amongst the uh, the Uruk Captains. He's got his Nazgul there and the Temple Executioners with that armor upgrade. Orc Javis, Orc Archers, and Orc Fodder, as we saw. The Black Guard of Baradur, two of them. And then the Mornon Infantry, some Orc Maulers there, no armor upgrade. Oh, some are, some aren't. Mornon Guard. Shadow Bows, Sauron's Well, more and more Orc Fodder, uh, more Non Archers, and some Menace Mortal Chosen there. So we'll get back to uh, normal one time speed then. Uh, but his first ally to his left is the Dwarves of Khazadum, led by Umad Kurmander there. So he's got his Hammers of Gundabad, Orc Hunters of Khazadum, Warriors of Khazadum, Dwarven Miners, the Catapult Crew, uh, well, the Catapult and its crew. Uh, Dwarven Miners again, Miners, Miners, and Orc Hunters, along with some Iron Water of Miramir, and in the back, some Guards of Castle Dome. Interesting amount of Miners there. Very, very cool. Uh, shield Guard there, and some Warriors of Castle Dome. Um, yeah, two units of Hammers. So, okay. Um, well, it's a lot of Shock AP. Um, so, and ah, uh, Miners are really not too bad. Like, they, they can hold their own. They're, they're a good, solid unit for... Uh, well, for what you get, as long as you don't let them get shot at too much, of course. Trumpster is over here playing his Gondor. Oh, he's disappeared. Uh, the rest of his forces, uh, Gondor and the Ar Gondorian archers with that armor upgrade, so they can really take a beating. That's the way I like to do it, if possible. At least one level of armor upgrade. Pelagar Marines uh, behind them. Warner, sorry, Wardens of the White Tower. Uh, so, yeah, these guys are going to be getting changed up, of course. Uh, nice two-handed swordsman. Very beefy two-handed swordsman. Uh, I think they're even going to get a shield value because, well, I'm seeing a shield on their back, so I'd expect them to get a shield value of some sort. Then Gondorian infantry there, Axemen of Lost Sanak, Citadel Guard, and anything else fancy? Gondorian archers, yes. Civilians, interesting. Yeah, pushing up that ram, it's fair enough. Um, Gondor, oh yeah, Gondorian spears. Yeah, Fountain Guard, of course. Fountain Guard would be a solid pick, just always for a siege and a field battle. If, uh, if a Gondor player is not bringing the Fountain Guard, I would be shocked. Uh, Grizzly Fox is to Beastie's right, playing as Isengard. So he's got his Trolls of the White Hand, a nice big blob here, so we're not going to be able to find things out too clearly. But it looks like we've got the Clansmen, Urukai Infantry, some Pikes there, uh, more Clansmen, Berserkers, Nazhai. Oh, he's got the Lurts Hunting Pack. You don't often see these guys in the field. I quite like them. Nice small... Uh, ranger unit. I'm pretty sure they're still body piercing. They might have been changed to be armor piercing, but uh, I don't think so. I think they're still body piercing. Uh, but still, and they're pretty damn good in melee after, they, uh, after they've after they used up their ammunition. So that's quite solid. And this looks like Cardlin? Yes. Oh no, no, it's Rohan. Yeah. Uh, I saw this green and I saw this and I actually thought that was the royal court of, how of House uh, Thorondor there. But nope. We have the Red Shields of Urkenbrand. Fantastic. The enemy want to sally out. We've seen a few successful sallies recently. Uh, so, yeah, the Red Shields would stop that. This is Y2K, of course. So he's got Riddermark Skirmishers behind them. Then some Westmark Spears. Eastmark Spears. The Air Red of Aldberg. More, more and more Spearmen. Riddermark Axemen. Uh, the Helm's Hammers. That's where we've got the General, so it's good. Uh, he's got some AP on that sword of his there. Shield Maidens of Rohan, Riddermark Spears, and the Westmark Marshals. Yeah, good. Okay, I like that. Uh, pretty much the same way I would construct. Uh, well, maybe I'd, I'd try to go for more Westmark Infantry, in all honesty, if I could. Uh, but I, I, it's no secret, I really do enjoy playing Rohan in Siege. Uh, well, Siege Battles, full stop. I probably wouldn't have taken the uh, the Air Red myself, but you can do some good work with a Lancer unit in, a, in the Great Havens. There is a lot of movement to to roam around and uh, and muck about up against the enemy if you can uh, get in there freely. So air red are not a bad choice, and I think he can do some good work, especially a skilled player like Y2K. And uh, hopefully he will not let us down because I do really love to show off the fact that Rohan can be used in a siege. You just have to be smart with it. 
and um, I, I suspect Y2K should be able to do that fine and dandy, um, but we'll uh, we'll not get ahead of ourselves. Um, oh, how long do I think it's going to take the defenders to deploy? Gravens usually is going to take a little while, uh, just because the attackers can come in so quickly. So I would I'm expecting maybe six thousand frames. Uh, for them to all deploy, we're going up to six times speed. I'm not moving, so you can't really see the jumpy frames. Uh, guessing this orange color is... I'm always wrong. Is it run? Um, yeah, uh, we'll go for that. Unfortunately, story-wise, I don't think I can construct anything here. We've got Gondor, Mordor, Isengard, uh, Khazad-dum, and the uh, the Rohirrim. So it's a bit tricky uh, to to work out what uh, what's going on here today. But, um, and especially we've got run on the defense. Um, the fact that Kazadum has a lot of AP makes me think that we do have some nice armored faction, but we'll, uh, we'll see. We've got Mirkwood, played by Panther, so certainly not a nice armored faction, as he has his Hiri Peng on the walls, Blades of Emmentwear on the ground, Woodland Protectors, Blades of Emmentwear, and more Hiri Peng. Definitely enough to hold that line. Um, yeah, well, they definitely should be able to hold that line up against a, a Rohirrim Assault um, for a little while anyway. The Hirioth here, an Elven King Palace Guard with an armor upgrade, so he has really poured a fair bit of money into that. Harad there by Stuart of Dale. And that, no, oh, it is run. I was right, but he's got some Haradrim forces alongside him. The Mahud Beast Tamers there, Dismounted Serpent Guard, Trollmen of Harad, and the Southron Warband. Hood Berserkers there, along with some more Beast Tamers. Uh, armor upgrades for the boys and the Dismount Serpent Guard, I believe. I Yeah, pretty sure. Pretty sure. Really not too sure. I need to maybe play as for Rad a bit more. Elders of the Elven King in the back there with some more Beast Hunters. Anything really fancy we're seeing, of course. The, dr well, Pimp, he's got the Dragon's Breath Cannon. Staring down Grizzly Fox's Isengard attack. The War Beasts of Harad there alongside some Beast Masters. Then Shadow Bows, Dragonrath Guildsmen, Crossbows, Hunters, and Southron Archers, and Sapphire Bladesmen there. Uh, anything cool over here? Yeah, no. I'll just scan over and look for anything. The Double Trollmen there facing off against the Dwarves is a good shout, I would say. And then Scion Rem and Shadow Guard just waiting here. It looks like Gondor's really going to go hard on that southeast or southwest side. But uh, yeah, it's, it's always good to leave something standing by just in case well, either they've hidden something and, you know, wh whatever it could be. It's just good to have something nearby a gate. Dragon's Wrath Guildsman there. Coming on around, this is where the bulk of Pimp's forces look like they're going to be. Crossbows. Crossbows with a lot of armor upgrades. I like that we can get a double armor upgrade on the crossbowmen. They're certainly nowhere near as tanky as the uh, Cardlin or, Lord forbid, Erebor crossbows. But... Um, they can take a bit of a punch now with those two levels of armor upgrade. Then the camels chosen. That's where we got the general today. That's definitely something that uh, I find run to be lacking in is the sort of infantry elites. Uh, they've got a handful of half decent ones, of course. But yeah, uh, more and more guildsmen. Then the scion rim standing by. Gamp rim, gamp rim, scion rim. No longer any sort of morale buffer on them. I do often slip up and say they do, but uh, but I do try to hold myself back from that. And Flagrim standing on the walls, ready to pierce into the armor of Gondor. Uh, coming into the back lines here, Champions and Afrat standing in the in the rear guard, but that's it really. Then Elders of the Elven King again. He's got two of these from Panther, so he's gone into the Red Limb a bit. Woodland Realm Protectors and Hirioth with the double Woodland Realm Axemen there. Uh, once again, doesn't really look like this is where Y2K is going to be coming at him. But it's always good to have something there. Now, cavalry in terms of the defenders, we have the War Beasts of Harad and a Beastmaster unit. So that's going to be a bit upsetting for uh, for Y2K, who was obviously very ready for them to sally out with something. Uh, Harad, a lot of very cheap um, lancers, and well, yeah. And then, of course, run with some great knights and great heavy lancers so it's it's definitely it's definitely sensible to assume that they're going to be sallying out we're getting a bit of a drop in frame rate just because that wall is coming down hopefully that will settle down um got my shadows on today sometimes when i play the gray havens i actually turn my shadows off 
just because it does make it uh, a lot less straining and we don't really get any uh, frame juttering. But uh, we'll, we'll power through this today. It does make things look a lot nicer, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, we'll maybe grab a quick picture of that just in case I forget to take a picture. <laughs> I shouldn't. I'm getting, I'm getting pretty good at remembering to do so. Dragon's Breath Cannon is standing by, but not really a nice target for it right now. Of course, it's going to be wanting to just melt them when they actually come through there. Uh, but Grizzly will take his time. I like that we've got Isengard and Rohan fighting side by side. You don't often see that. Uh, the Hiri Peng will definitely do some good work up against the lighter armored Rohirrim forces. For a, a good man faction, uh, the men of Rohan are not as heavily armored as, as many of their allies. And especially when you've got something like the Rittermark Axemen, it's going to be a bit messy. The Rittermark Spears uh, can definitely take a bit of that pun punishment because of that great little shield value they've got. And, uh, and uh, their armor is, is competent. Like, uh, I make it seem like their armor is, is, is paper, but it's really, it's it's just not as good as, as many other humans. That's all there is to it. Um, yeah, it's coming over here. Yeah, frames are juttering a little bit. Hopefully it does chill out a bit, but I think that, once again, is just that wall coming down. Yeah, good. Hopefully now that that's sorted. I mentioned, the, I mentioned in the last battle that artillery pieces usually have enough ammunition to take down, I think, like, th two and a half to maybe three sections of walls is what I tend to see. Um, you know, but uh, I think at this range, though, he shouldn't really be missing any shots, so he should be able to bring down all three sections if he wants. Now, where will he go with that? My recommendation would probably be to come over here just so that you assist uh, Grizzly for pushing through, because Grizzly's got a nasty, uh, nasty job against him with that Dragon's Breath Cannon staring him down. We've only got 27,000 frames though, so it's a surprisingly quick fight. I like what Y2K is doing here. He's grabbing a ram and he's moving around with it to sort of pressure the other side. It's, it's always good to try and do just a quick little shock attack like that. Make the enemy think that you're going to come in one side and then hopefully they're paying attention somewhere else and you're halfway toward the gate before they've realized you're going for it. Uh, but yeah, well, Grizzly is just powering on through that gateway. Harad not really wanting to spend any ammunition on him. Not that the, yeah, not that the berserkers can really spend any ammunition. Maybe throw off that massive, you know, club spiked club that they have but no wouldn't be recommended uh beast mode's got his or archers up here trying to unload a bit of fire into the uh into the lines arrayed against them he's got his orc archers spread out right now which of course that's always what you want to do but um i don't know i'd maybe clench them together a little bit because if they do if the enemy do start to try and shoot at you that's kind of what you want at this point uh, you know, you want them to be going into your orc archers, but to be honest, they're going in anyway, so yeah, nah, just leave them, leave them spread out. I'm talking out my butt. Uh, those Southron archers are opening up on the orc archers, who will definitely, um, eat them for breakfast, so. It's, uh, ooh, they are receiving shots back by, uh, by the orc hunters of Khazad-dum. Okay, that's definitely, uh, that changes the game a fair bit. Charging out here now are the war beasts of Harad alongside the beast masters, to, uh, as far away as they could possibly be, possibly be from the men of Rohan, and they are coming to bear down onto Trumpster's forces. Now those beast masters are going to be raining their jabs right into the face of the fountain guard. A very upsetting prospect for him. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, there's nothing really. You'd maybe want to just get the Pelagor Marines or something over there to, to take that fire from them, save the, save the uh, Fountain Guard, but at the same time, yeah, the Trumpster's got no range unit. Oh, no, no, he's got loads of those Gondorian archers. Where? Oh, have they just popped up? Where are the Gondorian archers, eh? Because uh, you'd want the Gondorian archers over here to, you know, wreck shots into the... Uh... Yeah, right. No, I guess they were over here facing down there. But yeah, Trumpster could grab these archers and uh, have them change the focus to the Beastmasters. Because you can see how quickly these poor guys are dropping. Lacking that shield, when you do come at these guys with a javelin, they, they will drop. They will drop really quite quick. Cheaper sake, that's really a pleasant. Especially when you can get that close to them, as uh, as these Mahood Beastmasters have been able to. It's um, They're just not missing shots. And wow. They're down to blooming 57 guys from 93. So that's a good a good amount of kills. Oh, almost accidentally went into those stakes. Where did the where did the war beasts go? Okay, they're just held back. I was worried that they've accidentally just jumped into the stakes or something. 
War Beasts don't really want to move forward up against this force right now. Uh, save that for now. And, uh, yeah, not really wanting to power right through a phalanx or anything like that. Orc Hunters there. Or, sorry, Orc Fodder and then Orc Hunters, oh dear. Very menacing prospect. Uh, it looks like Grizzlies maybe sending his trolls. It looks like the trolls are coming all the way around to try and deal with that calf, but these trolls totally by themselves is not going to be good. The war beasts, could, war beasts could come in for one quick charge and a few of those trolls would go down. Uh, that's definitely something worthwhile if, uh, if Harad catches that. If they can get them on the move. I would maybe, if I was Y2K, I would probably try and shove my red shields around. Not that they would get there in time, but just kind of a... to try and chase them back in. I, I don't know, but... I, I suppose what Y2K is thinking is like it's so far away from him. If he does get his red shields around, if he does get his red armor skirmishers around, then by that point, the enemy cav will just come out at him or come out another gate, and there's no point in it. Red armor skirmishers getting around to the gateway. Yeah, but the wardens of Amon Lank are standing by. No armor piercing arrows, uh, just very high damage arrows. They're armor piercing in melee, though, of course, with those beautiful axes so it's still it's it's enough to do a lot of damage but um not quite as fearsome as as something like the the wardens of the north of course or the temple guard but still pretty damn good trollman of harad standing up here nothing really pressuring them looks like isengard is more than happy to stand behind his uh, siege tower wall for the time being yeah, I'm just kind of interested with how short this battle is and the fact that we've not actually had a clash yet. I suppose when it kicks off, it just gets really, really hard, really fast. These Dismounted Serpent Guard are taking a bit of a beating here, which is always a shame because they are really quite good in melee. They are more expensive than your standard men at arms, especially if you do give them an armor upgrade. I need to look at what they... I know they become darker when you give them the armor upgrade, but I don't know... Um... Yeah, do they become like that, that black? Like the, like the Black Serpents, is that what they get when they get their armor upgrade and this is the standard look? I'll check that out right after this battle, but I'm, I'm not certain. Uh, but they've not actually got an amazing shield va value, so taking a beating like this is not going to be super duper fun. What is shooting at them anyway? Oh, the Orc Hunters too, dear. Yeah, so that's a, that's a pretty high damage arrow coming into them. Ooh, oh, oh, holy smokes. Does look like the Archers did turn around and opened up. And they did manage to drop some of these guys. The Citadel Guard will do a fair bit of a better job at taking that fire from the jabs uh still relying a lot on their armor value but at least having a shield as well and we can see like they've dropped themselves well they've been dropped down to 64 so from 90 so that is pretty pretty painful how are those trolls doing did those trolls stop surely they yeah they wouldn't have run all the way around there by this point no Looks like the trolls just got brought back here. I'm just waiting for an opportunity. I suppose he doesn't want to risk his trolls taking a shot from the Dragon's Breath Cannon. It looks like he is accepting his role that, you know, when he does go in here, he's there to to take damage and uh, and hold their focus. Now, this wall's coming crumbling down, and you do not want to lose these troll men. I think Stuart Adele is. Now, every, anybody who's played this game does know how kind of clunky these walls can be sometimes. Um, Steward Adele is probably giving them the order to run off those walls over and over and over again, but they just didn't want to do it. Um, and yeah, that's a big loss there because they're all two hit points. And yeah, I think, because you can see these guys here, I think that this is what they start to look like when they when they get that armor upgrade. So I think that that's them without an armor upgrade. But still, um, cheap or sick, ouch. Uh, not fun. Not fun to see that. Uh, locked morale units like that, uh, just very sturdy. Great stats and two hit points, as I say. So it's um, losing losing them to to falling off the walls like that is is upsetting. But it should mean that that catapult is almost done now. Oh, he's still pushing with it. So they're wanting to get all the use out of it. But once that comes around the side, it might like the uh, dragon's breath cannon is nowhere near as accurate as it used to be. But it is still pretty damn accurate. So it should be able to bring him down if they wanted to. Uh, but at this point, if it doesn't have too much ammunition left, if it can just be used to uh, as a bit of target practice for the Dragon's Breath Cannon, use up a bit of that ammunition, maybe that's that's as good as you can get. Now we saw the Ents are coming running on down here, and it looks like this uh, sort of northwest attack is not really going to be big enough to push through what's in front of it, but 
that's not, you know, that's not an issue. You know, like a lot of the time when you're trying to push through, it's not the goal to actually get through. Now, what's interesting, uh, we saw this in the last Dale battle a lot. There were a lot of opportunities where the attackers could have done this. But uh, Y2K might be able to just run something up there and get up on those walls. Now, if he did that, his men would be trapped in there. There's no way off those walls once he does get up. But, uh, yeah, and it looks like he's more than happy to just throw his javelins uh, into the uh, standing men in front of him. These, of course, armor-piercing javelins, as all javelins are in, in Reforged. They, um, I say that, I'm pretty damn sure that every javelin has armor piercing. So even those uh, sort of lower damage javelins from the Eastmark Spears. Oh, damn, 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 damn. This is another uh, bit of pain for poor Stu. Um, where is that happening? Is this over on the other side of that wall? Oh, God. Yeah, they managed to break down another section of wall. So I really am eating my words here. You're able to do a lot more damage to these walls than I expected. Well, you do a lot more with the ammunition of the catapult than I thought. So once again, that's a lot of berserkers. Not quite as bad a loss as the troll men, but still unpleasant. So that's six out of ten now. But uh, considering how many men have been lost on the walls, that explains that. Uh, still six percent casualties. Oh, okay, right. This maybe explains why the where the rest of the six percent casualties are coming from. And we are starting to see why this is maybe quite a fast battle because they are really getting stuck in fast. Dismounted serpent guard. A lot of skill on those guys. They do have a decent armor value for a wild, well, for a, an evil man, but they've got a lot of skill too, so and a lot of damage. So the the dwarven miners, I'm surprised they're having uh, having an easy fight there. But the troll men are coming on in now, and that should change things. But countered by the warriors of Kazadum, um, shouldn't be too bad. South Run archers there just needing to fill in some gaps, but uh, uh, warrior, uh, sorry, yeah, and more on infantry. Go toe to toe with the troll men. I see. I think once that sort of stabilizes, the troll men will start to dominate in that fight. No, yeah, nothing at all is pushing on over here. And yeah, you'd have to sort of get through the enemy cavalry there. The civilians bolting on away. Beast tamers just, sorry, beast masters just letting them go. I'd be tempted to just grab them just to make sure that they didn't end up returning from routing at any stage. And Trumpster doing a really good thing here as he's pushing in. He's he's closing the uh, the area behind him so that fewer and fewer units are actually required to watch his back. Okay, this is quite a good one. I think the silver of the Gondorian armor mixing in with the gold of the runic men is, is pretty nice. So we'll, we'll have that be the thumbnail. Still, so Axman Lassanak here doing a pretty good job. And also, we're seeing a lot of fire coming into these Gondorians, but so much of it is coming into the left side of them. So those those sturdy shields of the Gondorian infantrymen uh, are, are being very useful. Now, of course, these right side uh, units here are primarily Axmen, so they wouldn't have had a shield value anyway. And Trumpster is going in hard here, which is, is, is something I really like to see. You don't see Gondor being like outright super aggressive very often. So that's that's a lot of fun. And even with the AP that Pimp has brought to bear, they are struggling here. Which is a surprise. I would have thought that this... Yeah, he's even... He sent in his Camel's Chosen, which is a very good shout. I really like to see that. Um, gone, well, the General's, like, morale bonus is in there. And just the abilities of that unit is, is going to be helping out a lot. Shadow Bows are up there now, though. So they can just sort of delete a section of the line if they so choose. And it looks like that's what they're doing. Coming on back here. Uh, now that Gondor is going in hard there, it's it's going to be great. And I think he's going to do a lot of damage over there, but he's not going to win. And the, his allies are going to need to make sure that they make use of his sacrifice. It looks like Grizzly is coming in here pretty hard now. Uh, he's uh, been given some great help by that catapult, but he needs to make use of it. Oh, I like this sort of shock AP versus shock AP. Both like very lightly armored units just cracking into each other with, with really overkill weapons. So we're going to be seeing these guys drop very quickly, especially with this arrow fire coming in from... Uh, oh, sorry. Is that jab fire coming in? No, I think that was the Huri Peng. Huri me. Any attack being launched here? No, just being prepared by Y2K. Y2K is pushing up two gates himself, so he needs to sort of bide his time and make sure that he's doing this carefully. Eastmark Spears are coming on in there. A lot of losses taken from them, but Eastmark Spears are sort of the cheapest spear unit. Definitely the cheapest spear unit that uh, that Y2K has. So 
having a few of them go down especially having a few of them absorb a javelin volley from the woodland protectors is is awesome i'm sure y2k is not yeah he's i'm sure he's happy with that behind them he's only really got another east mark spears he's going to be wanting to use their javs and then the Riddermark Spears, Riddermark Axemen, and Westmark Marshals, with the Red Shields of Brand ready to do something if they can. So this is really, it's not going to be enough to break through here. Uh, it, but look at all the troops that he's able to, to keep focused on him. That's, uh, that's a pretty important thing. Westmark Spears. Yeah, this is really where his primary assault is, is going to be coming in. And there's... I would say that this is a lighter defense. Yeah, this is definitely a lighter defense than we've got on the other side, in all honesty. Uh, the trolls actually came slamming in here now, okay. And uh, yeah, they're they're overwhelming this position. Urukai infantry taking a beating, but their heavy armor will, uh, will allow them to do that for at least a while. And the enemy, the attackers are very quickly approaching the Dragon's Breath cannon, and it's not been able to fire yet. The defenders just have not been able to bottle up the... Uh, the attackers just because they've gotten three entrance points so there hasn't been a, a, a bottled point so that uh, that cannon has not been used yet i don't think it's been fired at all here we coming in still just trying to counter here beast mode is not going to be making real gains here uh, but i think he's just there to soften them up so that the dwarves can come on in after and as i say just like his gondorian ally just holding the focus on this point in Gondor, let's see how they're getting on under that shadow bow fire. Uh, what the factions here run? Harad. Harad's got a lot of rangers if they so choose. And then um, Merkwood. Yeah, Merkwood could every all of the defenders today could have a ranger unit. So I suspect they probably do. Uh, yeah, we're definitely gonna have at least three rangers kicking about. Possibly four from the mounted rangers off Harad. Flag rim. Yeah, it's a lot of AP and he well, decent armor up against AP and heavy armor. So, the Flag Rim's armor is, is pretty damn good, I think. Guildsmen there doing what they can up against, well, yeah, just finishing off the last of the Axemen while Sanak. I think Tropster can be pretty happy with how he's done. Uh, he's sort of been getting harassed the whole time, and uh, but he's kept his cool. And he's come in pretty sensibly, I think. Just got to make sure he uses the sort of his Pelican Marine ammunition nicely. I think his uh, I think his Fountain Guard were some of the first guys here. There's three of them left here. I think the Fountain Guard were some of the first guys in the fight. Camels chosen. There's only 17 camels chosen left. Uh, where are the wardens of the White Tower now? Actually, ah, oh, they're yeah, they're over here. So I did catch a look at some of them. Camels chosen versus wardens of the White Tower is quite an interesting fight. Just a uh, solid. Um, yeah, there they are. There's still 11 wardens. Up against sort of a, a very unpleasant front line. But they'll hold. Uh, they're sort of elite men at arms, so they'll do what uh, men at arms do, but just do it a hell of a lot better. This push here by Umad Kulmander is, is bumping up against the Beast Hunters, of course, with their little maces. Once they've used up their jabs, they're able to uh, to do some good damage to dwarves, but nah, it's, it's dwarves don't just rely on armor. They do have a lot of skill to back it up, too. As you can see from these little minor boys who are able to quite comfortably go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Hiri off. And, uh, and that is with a, a firepower coming at them. Poison arrows from the Serpent's Fang. That is Gondor's general drop. Now, Gondor's morale is certainly decent. But given the situation that Gondor is in over here, I suspect we're going to see a rout. War beasts floating around too. That's very scary. I think, yeah, we're, we're looking at breaks soon. And it's going to be quite sad because these, uh, these poor archers there... Uh, some of them are pulling out swords. Maybe they have used up... No, no, I don't think they've used up their ammunition yet. So hopefully they get a chance to. I'm sure the hope was that the walls could have been taken. And then the archers could have jumped on top. The javelineers could have jumped on top. But yeah, Trumpster is going to be getting sent packing here. But uh, he's done a good bit of damage. He's even required the champions. And the champions in Afra have even come over to, to face him now. So I think he can be very happy with his performance. Uh, I was very chuffed with how... Uh, Trumpster did in that Edoras battle a little while ago where he was Dorwinian. I thought he really did quite nicely too. Serpent's Fang's coming on forward now. I really, I like the Serpent's Fang uh, unit. Whenever I do play as Harad I will always take them and put my General in with them. I don't suspect he's here though. I think that the General is in with the Champions of Nafarat down in the southwest. Ooh, okay, we are opening up. 
Yeah, we are opening up onto the poor guildsmen, and we saw a f good few of them did just drop there. This golden arrow fire, or golden bolt fire, from the Dragon's Wrath guildsmen. Oh, that's another, yeah, that's another, like, body-piercing unit. It's an armor-piercing, body-piercing unit. It's insane. So, uh, like the Blacklock Engineers, too. So they are shredding these guys. Uh, the def the attackers have been are, are doing really well at not allowing the uh, the defenders to get a blob though, which is um, yeah they they took their time they bust in as many holes as they can, and uh, yeah they pulled the enemy away so the enemy just don't have the numbers to hold them back nicely. I like these Riddermark skirmishers inside, just getting jabs into the uh, into well any any elf is good. If you oh and I think they're getting their jabs all the way back into the elves of the Elven King. That's awesome. Yeah, that's some really good stuff. Riddermark Axemen just taking a bit of a beating for them. Shield Maids of Rohan looking for a volley. Yep. Yeah. Oh, god damn. Oh, these... So these Shield Maidens just sort of are baiting the uh, the Blades of M. and uh, so that their friends can get a back shot. And, oh, the Hiri Lang too. Yep. Yeah, damn. A lot of really, really good targets here. Uh, that is the, the main bane of Mirkwood, though. Uh, is throwing axes just because their men are very high quality and they don't really wear much armor so a throwing axe even though it doesn't do ap damage is just going to do a lot more damage to them you know like when when i play rude hour uh, i will always far vastly vastly prefer the uh, troll hunters uh, to the um the axe throwers uh troll shot axe throwers yeah and uh but that's when you're up against mirkwood that kind of bends that's the only time that I would uh, I would really sort of recommend instead think about going for the axe throwers. Air Red, though, they're still nice and healthy. Oh, I say that. What the hell do we have here? This is clever. I like this a lot. Um, oh, there's just, oh, it's just one guy. So the rest of his unit um, are inside somewhere. But that's great. He, if he's slowly just killing some more of these guys, then that's awesome. Like, I would expect he'll kill him. He might not, though. Oh, no, he's just chilling out. I think he's kind of a bit confused. But yeah, just a few more, a few less cav is, is really important. Red Shields of Urkenbrand getting right up behind these guys. And yeah, you can see, like, Y2K has, has he's been playing this game longer, longer than I have. He, he really knows what he's doing. And he's able to use these mounted archers really, really well. Here's another unit of rangers, though. And they are just raining some hell into... Yeah, the attackers have just done really, really well at just denying blobs. They've just not let it happen, and uh, yeah, that's been that's been pretty pretty top tier. So these rangers have just not been able to do their job. Crossbowmen coming in over here, taking a beating, and the the hara sorry, harashi, <laughs> Hash, uh, Hash, Hash, hashari hashari. Sorry, jeepers sake, my brain just melted there. Um, the hashari stalkers just popped out of nowhere to to tear them up, and. Oh, actually, sorry, those are Hashari Stalkers. Ah! So, yes, they are the Ranger units. So, the fact that they've jumped out of, jumped into melee makes me think that they have used up their ammo. Elder King Palace Guard over here, too. Yeah, just tearing them up. So, it does look like this attack has been held off. So, Grizzly is... He's got a few scraps remaining, but not enough to, to keep the fight... Well, he's got enough to do more damage, but he's not really got enough to keep the fight going there. And uh, Dragon's Breath Cannon being pulled over here. Beast mode coming flying on in. Uh, trying to do what they can with the War Beasts. I'd maybe, I'd be tempted to get the air red around here and, and come in through one of the more open areas. But uh, I'm sure he doesn't want to sort of risk losing his micro uh, on his on his main line. He wants to get the most out of it. Uh, the Pelican Marines are still doing some good work. Actually, um, there was an interesting sort of point raised uh, by Umad in one of his videos about like the kind of weird placement that the Pelagar Marines have between this kind of like high, like really high quality. Oh dear me, we're seeing these poor archers in the back there. Between like really high quality javelineers and um, like play of javelins, they're kind of like this this midline, and you know when do you use them and so on. But what well, like that wasn't quite what he said, but. Um, yeah, like, I, 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 do, I do certainly get that, because I like to, um, I really like to use cheap shafts, uh, because you can always get your worth out of them. It's always, it's very, very tricky not to, you know, get your worth out of, like, a really cheap unit of snag of skirmishers, because they're so, they're, they're so, so bloody cheap, like 350 or something, 450 maybe, even, doesn't matter, you know, 
you'll you'll do some good work with them and good quality jabs you should you know as long as you get like one good volley in there you've deleted an enemy unit so like the, those midline units it's it, it is a weird place that they have but um but no it's i kind of i like them for the sake of like the hybrid or the, the i guess the pseudo hybrid abilities of like once they do use up their jabs you can throw them on in they're they're decent enough in the fight uh whereas of course the snag of skirmishers that's i i feel that that's kind of what you're paying for with a midline jab the fact that you can you can trust them to do something in melee afterward but yeah um over here we've got the blades of emendure ah they've kind of yeah we saw the general drop recently so it looks like things are starting to come under control here as well for the defenders yeah, and Y2K has done a very good job pressuring both those sides, but he is almost almost out of this too. We're at 70 for 82, which is an amazing place for for a, an attacker to be in right now. But we do have all of these elites remaining, and the defenders are very quickly running out of um, areas that they actually have to worry about. You know, the Gondorians are almost done on the southwest. The Rohirrim are almost done in the northwest and the northeast as well. Uh, so this is really just sort of a, a last attack here, which is actually going pretty well because there are a lot of elites from the Urukai, but how long is it really going to be lasting? Uh, I kind of like that. Of course, these men were on the same side, but it does look like there's just a heap of Haradrim corpses that have just gone down, been shot in the back by the Greenwood Rangers. <laughs> but yeah, uh, over here. Oh, that's... Have they both gone down? Oh, they've been pushed off of it. But the Dragon's Breath crew are, are not, you know, they're no pussies in a fight. Oh, okay, well, Dragon's Breath uh, cannon is gone. That's actually funny. That's really funny. I'd never thought about that before. The uh, the ability for the Iron Watch of Miramir to just bring down artillery like that. They did that really easily, too. Fire, friendly fire be damned, dude. It's just orcs. And they've got a few of their own guys stuck in the fight, but yeah. The enemies are just much higher quality, so yeah, you're, you're more than happy to use your ammo once in there. Guards of Kazadum standing by. Still a lot of elite units for the attackers. I like this one Shadow Guard infantryman here. I really like to just muck about with, like, individual guys. Um... Because they're, they're so focused on actually just throwing out their arrows right now that they're not actually going to be focusing on him. And uh, good armor piercing, high damage strikes, just what you need. Like, he's already done, like, four strikes, and this guy's not even fought him once. Oh, okay. He, yeah. Oh, well, there we go. I was expecting, I was thinking he would take that last guy down, in all honesty, but no, he was backstabbed by one of his buddies. Oh, speaking of individual <laughs> fighters, we've got one Gamprem, and this is one crossbowman running away, too. And then one scion rim so that's pretty funny i like that um over here have we dealt with gondor no no gondor's finished the job here okay that's a risk boys we need to consider a final retreat yeah there's nothing back here if i was if i was trump's try would be running i guess i guess he's worried about um enemy cav and he just doesn't want to leave like the last few scraps here too but I would grab, like, these Pelican Marines and rush to the center. Uh, maybe that's... Sorry. <coughs> oh, dear. Uh, maybe that's a bit cheeky of me, but, yeah, that's that's what I would probably get up to. Guys running off there. Orc Hunters. Guards. Yeah, no. Iron Watch, you out? Oh, they're, they're celebrating something. They're cheering. And it's just the overwhelming push now. Off the off the black guard of Baradur, just throwing these guys around. Red shields of Arkham Brand running away from the Hiri Lang. Woodland protectors still trying to do what they can there, but backstabbed by the Urukai infantry. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's yeah. There was quite a lot left actually of um of Isengard's forces. The Wardens of Amon Lang really don't want to be sent up against the. Urukai Berserkers, it just wouldn't be an efficient trade, really. Uh, not when there's so much stuff still to shoot at the Urukai Berserkers. Poor guys would be getting shredded. Uh, the Naz high there. Kiri Peng coming in to hold them back. But no. Uh, the Elven King. Where are you going with these Hearthguard then? Um, hmm. 
No, or Warden, sorry, not the Hearthguard. I was thinking the Hearthguard of Amon Sewell. And then I was like, wait, no, it's not Hearthguard of Amon Lang. That's, that's not what they are. Ah, they've still got their ammunition. Okay, they definitely don't want to get sent in a fight yet. Uh, firing up and over, never really something you want, but with, with elven accuracy, as we can see, a few of these shots are hitting. Not really something you want to do, of course, but uh, if you absolutely have to, it can work. But yeah, Mordor is uh, is swarming forward now, stopping these rangers. And yeah, because the defenders just haven't retreated back, uh, it is just a bit of butchery. Now, um, we've even got that Rohirrim Cav that can come running on in to try and snag them. It looks like there was maybe even a bit of a counter charge here. No, no. No, it looks like Gondor is rushing in towards the center. So what do we end up with? 77. I was, I was really happy with this one. Um, I think that the, the defenders were definitely taken, uh, taken by surprise by the, uh, by the attacker's aggression and we'll, we'll run it out to the, to the very end, but I'm, I'm calling this for the, for the attackers right now. Uh, I definitely think that they'll end up getting up to, you know, the, the low eighties, which in my mind, as I say, anything over 80% to me is a close fight. Um, people may disagree with that, but yeah, it's fair enough. You, you can disagree. It's, you know, it's not your channel. Uh, but yeah, so it's. It was good. I um I think good use of the, the catapult definitely taken out exactly where they needed to take out. Uh but the real the real like glory of the attackers here was just denying the defenders any sort of, of, of blob. That was uh that was their, their true victory here. It was just um Yeah, like they they had so many rangers, the defenders, and they had the Dragon's Breath cannon, but they weren't able to use any of it because, um, yeah, the, the attackers just did not allow it. They just came in with quality and, uh, you know, just where it was needed. And uh, and all over the place, too, really spread the defenders thin. You know, you often... Yeah, that's, that's Gondor in the center. You often see the attackers just attack from here, 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 and here. And usually, for some reason, I'm always either north or south. I never spawn on the west. Uh, sorry, the east. Oops, it is. Yeah, I never spawn on the east of this map. And uh, so I always like to try and pressure both of the gateways just because it spreads the enemy thin. And we kind of saw that here. Um, and they didn't just kind of like stand around too. They did really pressure them. Like Trumpster came in really hard in his position. And uh, and that was, it, it meant that, uh, that Rune really had to dedicate so much of their power to, to dealing with them and and they just didn't really have enough uh, enough left for it the air red yeah we're seeing them floating in around here now they're just gonna be chopping these guys through assessing them as high we're seeing a cavalry unit there once again it's nice to see the urukai and the uh, and the rohirrim making up and uh and fighting side by side up against these devilish elves and eastern and southern men um but yeah as i see i can't really think of a of a lore for this battle <laughs> can't really think about how it happened but uh but yeah it's still it's a it was a good one um shadow bow is there nice what is the armor value of a shadow bow no no actually because they do have that armor plate on them so i'd expect it's maybe you know a touch higher than some but i think uh, yeah people do seem to like the shadow bows a lot when i actually play as mordor i don't i tend not to take the shadow bows but you know I, I just don't enjoy using stuff like that so much, any, you know, all the time. As he moved off from the center. So this is this is sometimes, like, some guys just will, will chat away and be like, look, you know, if you don't take the center, we'll, you know, we'll give you another fight uh, type thing. It's we're, we're all friends here. We're all buddies. So it's uh, the, these guys, all all these players, I've seen them about a lot. Um, nobody nobody really screwed up, as I say. I don't think, um, I don't think there was any, like, major misplays from the defenders. I think... Um, Stu definitely kind of a few goofs with uh, like letting his guys get killed on the walls but as I mentioned sometimes those walls can be very glitchy and as soon as they start to receive damage your guys are just like oh and they just they just give in to their fate and they they make no attempt to run off the wall and they just die you know that's that could have very well been what happened to to Stuart's, uh, Stuart Dale's guys um I would not be surprised by that. I'm just trying to find a nice little spot. Oh, oh, nice, nice, nice. I can't wait. I, I do want to get rid of that at some point, just so that it is just open, uh, open ocean, because I do like the Grey Havens aesthetically. It's one of my favorite looking maps, I'd say. Um, and then yeah. So I don't think the defenders did anything wrong here. Um, I think this was just a great play by the attackers. Really, really was. What did we end up with? So 80%. Yeah, 
yeah, pretty solid. Um, I, I think it was kind of the use of cav there and the use of elite units that really didn't let it get any any higher than that. Um, so the defenders maybe um, maybe like they had too many like range units and they didn't have enough infantry to kind of to plug the gaps. Um, I think because you've got Harad there, who is a very good ranged faction, and you've got Harad. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> you've got Harad. It's very good, like javelin faction. Uh, you've got Merkwood there, which is a very good archer faction, and I think they both went pretty deep into those categories. And then Pimp with his runic forces, he went. He still went pretty deep into his ranged power. Uh, so we had three guys with like very very good ranged units trying to hold back like a very well organized and very well timed assault ah i think i see what might have been the problem here so we've got everybody as uh, what are they guardians of chaos i think it's yeah well goc anyway um so these guys no i'm not i'm not i don't know they might have all been chatting and uh like they they, they all know each other well, everybody knows each other so that could have been some good coordinated efforts it really did look coordinated so that makes that makes some sense um if that's the way that it went down uh, Temple Guard here, Be, you know, not used too much, so it's fair enough. The Nazgul, actually, I didn't even see the Nazgul get thrown in, but it's, it's good to see them get chucked on forward. Slicing through those guys pretty comfortably. Temple Executioners, nice, nice, nice. Um, anything really crazy? No, I'd say, it, like, Mordor really played his part of just being the, um, uh, the meat shield for the dwarves. So, and, like, you can see a lot of his big hitters just didn't, get a chance to be used so that's like the temple execution just barely got used the temple guard didn't really get used and the uh the shadow guard or the, sorry the shadow bows the Adunam shadow bows didn't get used so that was generally the case a lot of a lot of prisoners there too so that, that was good capture a lot of boys um i absolutely adored what trumpster did of course and y2k i was really fond of uh, of his play today um good grabbing the red shields of arkham Rand just to keep everybody safe um and keep himself safe for sure and the red march skirmishers you know the red march skirmishers just a good shout you know all the time then uh yeah let's see grizzly fox there actually really, yeah really really solid i i was i was worried that grizzly fox because that flame uh because the dragon's breath cannon was sat there i was expecting dragon's breath cannon just to shred grizzly but he timed it right it came in exactly when he needed to and it was it was impressive uh yeah and then cool mander yeah no, no complaints with what Coolmander was up to either. He was, he was solid, uh, just working alongside uh, Beast Mode very nicely. So yeah, great stuff. Um, and yeah, Grizzly definitely the right idea to bring the trolls back. If those trolls had run off to try and support Gondor, which I, that was, it was noble, it was good. I really, you know, I, I can see that, and it was nice. But they would have been butchered by the beasts in the, on, in the open, just absolutely, and and it would have been really unpleasant to just lose an entire unit of that quality in that way. Um, but yeah, maybe maybe that was the case. I'll have a I'll have a think about their army compositions. Uh, maybe even have a look through the the battle again myself before I before I send it off to the to the archives. But um, I think maybe the boys had a bit too much range power, and you know you've got to keep in mind as well. Like we lost basically two full units on the walls, uh, but you know, and they they were like sturdy melee infantry. Maybe some Southron pikes could have been appreciated um to hold the line you know armor piercing pikes just keeping everybody back uh but i can definitely see the attraction of the of the mood berserkers and such and definitely the trollmen always always the trollmen um no demons though but as i say like that's kind of I, I was i was saying like the boys maybe had too much ranged power so the demons would have just been adding on to that you know uh even if they can fight quite quite nicely in in melee so that that could be it maybe just a bit more coordination in terms of what we're actually getting um, and the faction choices too. Like all the factions just had such a powerful ranged, ranged focus. Maybe um, instead of one of them, maybe instead of rune, like maybe an Erebor could have been an idea, but I don't know. It, it, went, it went pretty well anyway. Yeah, but yeah, thank you guys very much. And I will uh, see you later.